Season one, episode eleven. Season two, episode eleven. The desert. I'm sorry. I don't know why I like to say season one so much. <laughs> I think this is I'm used to saying it was Steven Universe. How could you let them take Why didn't you stop them? Bro, she tried her best. Yeah, no, she. She really did. Yeah, literally. He'll try and kill you. Well, the episode's called The Desert, so we're going to be in the desert the whole episode, I guarantee it. And Zuko and Iroh out here, too. <laughs> okay, Iroh. Oh, that's wonderful. Nice. Let's go, Iro. I love when he gets into action, dude. Ooh, single handedly taking them out. Oh, never mind. Zuko second. <laughs> yeah. I mean, considering he banished himself with Zuko like he followed him out after he was banished it would seem that every old friend he had would be out to kill him essentially especially now more than ever they're gonna die out here can't you watch where you're no right <laughs> Bro, it's better than nothing. Or it's going to have a hallucinogen in it. That is not a normal... If I've learned anything from this world, nothing is like it is in real life. Like all the animal breeds are hybrids and stuff. That is not a cactus. That is some like hallucinogenic cactus or something. Hmm. Great, now he's just crazy. That's not a cactus. He is fueled with anger. Oh, they're going the wrong direction. What is that? What? Where's what? It's a giant mushroom. Dang, dude, he made a huge friendly. Let's just keep moving. Did I give you any indication where they were headed? Oh, Maybe it's the mercenaries. Yeah. That uh Toff's parents hired. <laughs> yeah. Look, Fire Nation wanted posters. So, so look who's here. 
Wow. Oh. I've trekked through the desert before, like when it's really hot and stuff. Wouldn't wor wish it upon my worst enemy. It is miserable. It really is just the worst. And now that it's getting dark, it's going to get freezing for them. Like, oh man. Oh, nice. He's back. Are those real? I don't even know. Yeah. Katara is like the only one still put together. <laughs> I like that she's taking leadership and initiative here. Oh, those things are real. I like that she's actually taking leadership here. I like she does really feel like the leader of the group. Which I really like. I like genuinely do like that about her character. Everyone can have a little drink. Oh, oh no! You killed us all. No, he hasn't. Oh, right, yeah, you can bend it. I'm stupid. <laughs> Sokka, let me see the things you got from the library. What? I didn't steal anything. Who told you that? It was you! You ratted me out! <laughs> Maybe a good night's sleep will help him get out of it. I have no idea how this game works, but this is so intense. <laughs> Whoa. Cool. Welcome, brother. The white lotus opens wide to those who know her secrets. Oh, clever, clever. It's like some old, like, secret passage to get information. I like that. Gas bag's talking about. It's not about the game. Nice. I'm not waiting all night for these geezers to finish yapping. It's over. You two fugitives are coming with me. I knew it. You two are wanted criminals with a giant bounty on your heads. I thought you said you would help. Yes, just wait. You oh. think you're going to capture them and collect all that gold? Gold? Oh, turning the entire voice against them. Uh, maybe we nah, he wants this fight. Well, we need to get moving if we want to get out of this sand pit. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. She flies by herself. It's a cloud. It's just a cloud. Wait, a cloud? Here. Water. And bend the water from that cloud into my pouch. Yeah, that's how class works. It's a desert cloud. I did all I could. What's anyone else doing? What are you doing? Trying to let the group survive. 
I get if he's angry with Toph. That makes sense. Even though totally not her fault at all. Um, but, you know, if he had to pick on someone to blame, he, you know, picked on her because, you know, she was out there watching him. But, I mean, Katara's just trying to keep the group alive. Like, everyone's just trying to survive out here. But I get he's just, like, super emotional right now. But, like, calm down, bro. <laughs> Literally. Katara is the only one that's like, Ow! you know, because Sokka's out of it. Momo's doing whatever he's doing. Toph is just like dead. <laughs> Aang is just angry. And uh, Katara is the only level headed one here right now. Oh. Believe me, I kicked it hard enough to feel plenty of vibrations. Can you earth bend it out? Oh, wait. It might have been one of the, the sleds from uh, one of the dudes that kidnapped. Yep. It's one of the gliders the sandbenders use. And look, it's got some kind of compass on it. I bet it can point us out of here. Egg, you can bend a breeze so we can sail it. We're going to make it. <laughs> okay. I'm afraid it's members only. <laughs> this is cool. I like this. I, I wouldn't assume it was pointing north. I know it's a compass, but the compass is probably specifically arranged to point at a direction maybe of a place of operations that they're supposed to... Like, maybe their compasses point towards, uh, you know, wherever they're holding up, I suppose. Now, I don't really know the logistics behind that, because obviously a compass points north because of mag magnetic north. So there'd have to be some magnetic force pointing in a different direction, unless it's not a real compass. But I'm curious where it does point to. Ah, okay, so it is magnetic. Yes. Cool, cool, cool. Rock. <laughs> Tunnels. Ooh, that goo isn't. That's concerning. No, there's definitely some. I was gonna say that goo. There's probably some monster in these tunnels now, so that's fun. Yeah, you I idiot. Have a I don't think this is a normal cave. No. This was carved by something. Some yeah. creature. Look at the shape. And the There's goo. Something buzzing in here. Something that's coming for us. Oh, is it those wasps? Because we saw those wasps circling in the sky, and I thought Sokka was hallucinating them, but he wasn't. That's yeah, th this looks like a nest. Oh, it's a giant hive. I hate that. That is awful. Mm -mm. Dude, I'm loving the vibe of this episode. Just being stuck in the desert the whole time. Like, this is really cool. I like this. I like seeing them on... In the least horrible way possible. I like seeing them, like, on their last legs. <laughs> that sounds awful, but you know what I mean. Like, just, like, they're going through it right now. Oh, well, he's good. 
Was he out for vengeance? Oh, he definitely is. Oh. For villain arc right here, man. Look at him. Those are sand benders. What's going on? Is the club meeting over? Everything is taken care of. We're heading to Ba Sing Se. Ba Sing Se? Why would we go to the Earth Kingdom capital? So we're all going to the same place again. I love how, even though they're on separate journeys, like Aang and Zuko, they conveniently intertwine all the time. I like uh, I like that he immediately turned to him. He's like, "What'd you do?" Like he doesn't even trust him. That's crazy. You put a muzzle on him. You muzzled Papa. Oh, yeah, you really pissed him off. I'm sorry. I didn't know it belonged to the Avatar. Tell me where all it is. Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> nice. I like that she's still here for him. To calm him down. I like this. That's how it ends? Wow. Dude, I thought we were going to get him back in this episode. We didn't. They traded him and It's going to be probably the next episode, if not the one after that, before we get him back. We are really without our crutches here. Because he is, like, so underappreciated and convenient. Like, he gets them everywhere and anywhere all the time. And without him, like, in this episode, they are stranded. This was a fascinating episode. I was about to say fantastic, and then I wanted to change it to fascinating, so I said fascinating. Anyways, um, no, I really like this. Like, the idea of being stuck in the desert the whole time, Sokka being freaking out of his mind the whole time, hallucinating. I think that's pretty funny. Um, I just like the tension in this. The Zuka storyline was fine. It was just kind of there. Uh, pretty much, I think, only the only part his story played in this episode was the fact that they're going to the same city now <laughs> you know um but i just like the tension between the group in this episode and being so mad at top and then getting mad at everybody because he's just super emotional in the moment so i understand that um and then like him going off and doing his own thing and then coming back and reluctantly helping his group and just kind of losing it um, even though he doesn't really have the right to feel that way against everyone, especially Katara, because she's the only one keeping the entire group together. She's the only 
she's definitely the leader of the group. She's the only level-headed one in this episode, and, uh, you know, the heart of the group, even, I would say. And she really pulled through on this. I'm, like, really impressed with her. Um, but, yeah. Uh, we finally confronted the Sandbenders, but they traded in Appa, so I guess we have to go find him now. But, dude, pissed him off so much. I mean, he was angry this whole episode, but pissed him off so much they unlocked the Avatar state of him. That's crazy. You can piss someone off that much. Or piss him off that much. But I love, I love, and it'll probably be my thumbnail because beautiful scenery as well. Uh, Katara just being there for him, like hugging him, just to get him out of the Avatar state, like calming him down. Like, she has put in work in this episode, dude. I'm like actually really proud of her. She was, yeah. So just a lot of character building and growth here. Because we've never seen Aang this pissed off before. We've seen him, like, sad or, you know, a little, like, you know, frustrated. But we've never seen him angry. And so this is a whole different experience with that. And I actually really like seeing that side of him. And then, you know, Katara being there the whole time to comfort him. I, I do like that. Even though he was not the easiest to be around and was, like, getting mad at her and stuff, she was still level-headed and calm. It was like, okay, whatever. So, I don't know. I just, I really like this. And then Toph was there. I don't know. She didn't really do much. But, you know, this is always a welcome addition. I really like her character. So, everyone served, most people served a purpose in this episode. But I did find it a very fascinating episode. I like this idea of being stranded. I, I like this, um, having an episode dedicated to just being stranded. Uh, I do think that's cool. And now it looks like we're going to be working with the Sandbenders to get Appa back. Even though it's their fault he's gone, but we kind of have to work with them so they can get out of the desert at least. So, yeah, we're going to be without our crutches for a little bit, it seems. Uh, but I do find that pretty fascinating. Uh, I do like that pulling Appa out of the the show for a little bit. It definitely makes everything a lot more difficult for our protagonists. So, yeah. But yeah, thoroughly enjoyed this episode. Very great. Um... And I'm excited to see where it goes next. Maybe we'll get him back in the next episode. Maybe after that. Maybe it'll be even longer. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, this was a fantastic episode. Great continuation from the last one. So, yeah. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next one.